Hello, this is Crypto CJ. It's Trade of the Day, Friday afternoon, Zoom edition. And Bitcoin has been trending mostly sideways, dipping a little bit, not doing really much. It's been disappointing. So we're, we're a little bummed out on a Friday. We're hoping for a bigger move up, but uh, let's check out the charts, see what we can see. Okay, you should be seeing Bitcoin day chart. Yes. Thank you. So we did move up some. I mean, we we had, we had tested the twenty five thousand um, dollar support on Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday, and then we thought we might be making a really nice move up. We're up three or four percent percent, but we gave some of that back today. So twenty six five, give or take, not bad, but. We'd like to see that push up to 30, um, you know, preferably a bigger move than this, just kind of crawling at the moment. Last couple of days, it did go up a little bit, but um, kind of sleepy. I've been reading articles about, you know, low volumes, the worst in 2019, uh, some things like that. Some news artic um, news here and there that one could perceive as, as positive, but not enough to get this uh, this market moving, you know, most... Most uh, institutions are on the sidelines, probably waiting for the SEC to decide how they want to muck things up or maybe be chill about it. Who knows? And then obviously retail has been out for quite a while. There's just, uh, you know, us uh, mostly true believers who are trading the market at this time. September tends to be one of the worst months trading anyway. So a lot of my trades have been shorts. Um. So you might want to keep that in mind. Uh, most prognosticators are talking about a bump at the uh, the fourth quarter of 23, starting uh, presumably in October. So we just have to slog through September to get there. But who knows, right? Um, all right, so we're still in this range on Bitcoin, Ethereum. We broke below what I had drawn out. I need to update this. I, I did on my chart, and then I had some technical problems, as you know, so I didn't. I didn't do it again. But we are back in the range at uh, sixteen thirty-three. We dipped below sixteen hundred for a little while, for a couple of days, and then uh, then came back pretty strong. So Ethereum's recovering a little bit better. Any comments, um, theories, prognostications you want to throw out on the market overall? Before we move on. So on the plus side, markets like this, these kind of ranging markets, can be good for those of us who like to scalp and make 1%, 2 or 3% day traders. So let's um, look at all coin alerts, see if we can find some of those. Okay, here we are on the all coin alert page I'm on the radar altcoin radar readout I'm going to refresh to get the most recent information first sort is going to be by aa score see what I can find in there looking for values 80 and higher usually uh, I was looking at gno ganassus as a as a spot trade a little earlier so let me re revisit that um, Get on the five minute chart. GNO, it is on Coinbase, so Americans can trade it. On the five minute chart, looking for a one, two, three dip setup, not seeing it. Uh, volume's not real good on this. It, it looks a little bit better on the 15 minute chart. We'll get over there in a moment. If you want to set a price alert, try to anticipate a dip. Uh, support's pretty clear right here. In the middle of this green zone, this is my supply and demand visible range, a free Lux Algo uh, indicator. I've been uh, using this for the last few weeks to help me you know, find ranges. So let's, um, we're right in the middle though, right? Sitting on the SMA line, you know, the, this red line between the Bollinger Bands, simple moving average which is not where I want to enter a trade on the five minute chart. So I suggest doing a price alert somewhere in this vicinity. 
uh, maybe here around 9650. It's easy to do your right click, add an alert, and AA score. I like to use the information source as the alert name. And Trading View will remember those uh, those entries if you put them in, say, five times or more. So click on that, go to my notifications. How do I want to be notified? I want to know in my app on my phone, uh, pop up on my desktop computer. Uh, I don't want an email. This is for auto trading, not relevant here. Play a sound also on my desktop computer. And let's go three notes reverb, one of the, the pleasant sounds. Some of these are pretty harsh. You know, they are designed to get your attention. So alarm clock. Don't don't use that one. You won't like it. Um, Handbell's not bad. Can't remember fault. Chirpy, I like. Beep beep, not bad. So this is my favorite. So that's how you do that. But that's not how I really want to be in, be informed. I like uh, indicators on the fifteen minute chart. So at the moment we're still in the middle, even on the fifteen minute chart. Let's look at divergence, see if we can find something um, with this indicator. And since we're on spot, we're looking for bullish divergence, which is the green ones. And they're not doing all that great. So let's look at this momentum one here. Scroll back. OK, it did trigger in the green zone on our range. So. That's a trade I probably would have taken, and it would have gone against me about 5%. When I'm spot trading, I usually do an additional purchase around 5%, uh, give or take, depending on what I'm seeing on the on the charts. So in this scenario, I would have um, I would have had a another buy ready to go at 5%, and then when that triggers, usually an alert lets me know. And then I ride that back up. My first position breaks even, and my second one makes 5%. That's a pretty good day trade. Um, though it does take four days, so that's a, that's kind of a bummer. Is that right? Four days? That doesn't seem... No, it, that's not right. It's That doesn't seem right to me. All right, so that's a divergence. Not a great entry. Let's look at super trend, which is a really good entry but it doesn't trigger very often. I mean, this 15 minute chart goes back to Tuesday. It's only got two triggers. Only one of them we can use on spot, which is this buy here. So from what I can tell, that's a, that's a really good entry. Since this is trend trading, I'm going to, I'm going to look at my other indicators, see how they, see if they confirm. So I'm in the green zone. So that's where I want to be. I've got the RSI trending up. I'm still in the red on the RTI, which is something I've been using to uh, to help me with confirmations. I'm in the red zone on the squeeze momentum. So in this scenario, I'm probably going to set a confirmation alert. Um, I probably set it here on the squeeze, and I want it to go above the zero. So here's how you do that. Add an alert, crossing up on zero. Uh, only once, actually. And this is going to be a confirmation alert. Click that on. And make sure your notifications are correct. I didn't save my last one, so it's going to keep what I what I did last. So that's your confirmation alert. And that would have gone off right about here. So you do sacrifice a better entry for that confirmation, probably get in around here and up to the red zone would be almost 3%. So that would have been a, a pretty good day trade. Okay, so that's the super trend approach. And then what I've been using the most though is the RSI, but that's this isn't a very good example of that because it's just going middle. Um, on a on a spot trade, I want it to dip below this 30 value and then come back up. We do have that here. And so I would have gotten in, I would have ignored 
I do want the cross to occur in or near the green zone on a long. I don't care about the other indicators, though. This is more of a contrarian approach, so I'm not seeking confirmation other than the zone. So I'd be in here, and this would have been a better entry. I probably would have been looking. Uh, let's see what the red zone would have been. Yeah, the red zone is essentially showing the range anyway, so I want to get close to the top of the range, but not all the way. So my exit probably would have been around here where these um where where these candles are. I might have just missed it. So yeah, I probably get in right about here. And if I'm conservative, I, I look at this and I say, I'll get out here with 4.6% and I uh, get that in two days. Not bad. Okay. Any questions on GNO? All right. Let's look at uh, something with a little more volume. So that was an AA score alert. Uh, this one here, Tomo, is an older project. It's been I've seen some people have been trading this lately. It's only up 1.22% today, so mostly sideways. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's look at Tomo. I haven't looked at this one in a while. This is on most exchanges. It's an older older project. I have a Binance chart for it. And on the five minute, um, towards the top of the range, above the the middle line here on our on our Lux Alga visitor visible range. So I don't like that as an entry. Uh, if you want to set a price alert, you can do do that here around the green zone. You can see support. Uh, down here around dollar eighteen. Okay, with our indicators, divergence. Uh, let's look at this as a as going either direction. If you're a spot trader, you're going to be going long. If you're a leverage trader, uh, like myself, you go either direction. And this looks pretty good. Um, a short here uh, from Wednesday night did really well, and these. You know, these entries are good too on divergence. So they're they're triggering, you know, in or near the green zone, assuming that that's being consistent. Yeah, I should probably not make, not assume too much. Yeah, so it's still in the green zone even back then. So you can keep taking these these trades as they go off, these uh these bullish divergences. You know, this gets me, you know, 1% here, which is usually what I'm looking for. Uh, this one here, uh, about the same, you know, in five hours, not bad. I'm usually, at, I'm looking for a 1% move at 10x leverage. You know, you might be, if you're trading spot, you might want a, a bigger move up here uh, to this this resistance. So let's say you take this one. And you're trying to get out here with about, you know, say two or three percent. Um, if you're going for three percent, you're not going to make it. But if you're more conservative here at two percent, you get out here in a little over a day with two percent. If you pile up one percent, two percent wins, even on, even on spot trading, you can improve your your account balance uh, quicker than you might think. And then we have a short here that did pretty well. Yeah, got my 1%. So, you know, if you are trading spot, you might want to go, you know, say a 20 minute chart or a 30 minute chart for divergence. Yeah, like this one here. Yeah. Didn't really help us. So that's something to consider. If you're not seeing what you like on the 15 minute, consider adding, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes to your chart. Okay, so divergence looks pretty good. Oh, let me hear, let's go ahead and do an alert on this. 
negative divergence once per bar close. That'll stay on until I turn it off. Uh, this was AA score. Is that right? Negative. I'm going to keep that on negative. And yeah, let's get these going correctly. And click Create. And that's how you do that. It should show up here in your alerts. Yeah, there it is right there. If you want to trade both directions, like I frequently do, then you'll need to do the same thing for a positive divergence like that. And the rest is the same. Okay, let's look at super trends, see if that would give us some better entries. <laughs> The sell entry here is good from Wednesday night. The buy here, yeah, that would have been, so we would have been in the green zone at the time and confirmations all around. So it would have gotten in here and not quite good enough. Doesn't make us a 1%, so it does take a dip. For me, I do, on my autom automated trading, I do another buy at 2%, so I'd be in here, and then I'd get out, you know, in this vicinity here. Um, so that would, trade would have worked out for me. If you are looking for bigger moves, uh, you might still be in that trade. Uh, this buy here was a little bit better. Got our RSI trending up, RTI trending up, but not at the 50 yet. So that one's kind of iffy, but we've got the squeeze momentum just trade, just turning over. So that would have been a pretty good entry. But you don't trade the the super trend just just on these signals. That's a usually doesn't work. Um, okay, let's look at our RSI. Yeah, let's go with our. Horizontal line, got an entry here, goes above the 70 and drops down. Really nice short position. Um, we got a long here. It's not so good. Probably going to have to ladder buy on that one. Another trigger here. Um, probably a similar situation. And then we don't get another one until we get over here. And we're probably still in that trade. This one, this entry here. I don't know if I would have taken that. Well, yeah, I would have. So still be in that one. So all these op op options look pretty good for Tomo. Any questions on, on this one? Okay, let's um, see what else we can find. Um, let's try long-term sentiment. This is what people are talking about on Twitter. We're going to match that up with Elder Impulse, which is a technical indicator. Dusk has been, again, older project. It's been been trading pretty well lately. Render, I like a lot. Trade that one a lot. Um, so those are two options. I looked at Perp. There's somebody in the AA Slack group not not happy that that this didn't pick up Perp. And let's let's talk about when, you know how the AA score actually finds things. It's looking for the AA score is looking for projects that are beaten down that are due for a comeback. So if something is just kind of coasting along, not doing anything in particular, and then some whales dump into it and it shoots up 20, 30, 50, 100 percent, you know AA is not going to find that. It might find it through a significant development in a news item, um, which I don't talk about very often on here. But because uh, I'm more of a technical trader, I like charts. I think I think it's really difficult to catch the news. Uh, I, I ha haven't had much luck with that kind of thing. So, but but doing this, what I'm talking about, I, I like and and I like altcoin alerts showing me what's you know what's what's in play. So now, if you do want to look for something that's pumping, you got this option here: is 24 hour change, and you know you can see what's what's you know, pumping like crazy. TRB has been storage. I've been trading a lot lately. Uh, Orchid, 
I don't recall this one. I traded this a few years ago, but then it kind of disappeared. So you can sort by this and find out what's pumping and try to catch it. But usually once it does this, it's too late. So if I do use a sort, I usually look at for some of these values down here in the high single digits because they, in my mind, I still think they have room to move. All right, so where was I? Went off on a little tangent there. Uh, Long-term sentiment, that's what I was doing. And we're looking for a match. We got that with Dusk and with Render. Uh, Render's been moving better, I think. So let's look at that one. Okay, head over to the five. Yeah, we're up in the in the cell zone right now. So don't like this uh, area as an entry potential. Price alerts are here around 157, 156, 155. Imagine that. Okay, on the 15 chart with indicators. Divergence. Looks pretty good. Yeah, all these look they they look good up until about here. Um early this morning. Yeah, I'd probably still be in that trade had I taken something. Let's see that that have been closer to the zone. Yeah. So yeah, I probably would have taken that one. I'd still be in it. So mm, kind of on the fence on uh on divergence, super trend. Yeah, that short would have been a, a good entry, but I'm not sure. Well, no, actually. Let's look at that. I don't know, kind of on the fence on that one. It's not in the red zone. It's coming out of it, though. So maybe it's trending down. And had I taken that short, probably still would have had to ladder by. Might even still be in it. Yeah. Oh, I underestimated it. No, my 1% approach, I would be out of that, you know, in, a, in an hour. But if you're looking for a bigger move, you'd probably still be in it. Okay, on the buy. Uh, we are pretty far from the zone, so I would not have taken that one. Just sitting right there in the middle. Sell, same, similar problem. This buy. Yeah, still in the middle. I don't know if I would have taken any of these using my range approach. The downside of, of a range approach is sometimes it screens out a good trade, you know, like this, this is above, you know, the midline and, you know, does make a two and a half percent move. If you're more into trend, there are some people who wait for a break of the midline and then get in trying to catch what they think is momentum. And, and that, that can work. It, it hasn't been my experience, but um, when I was focused more on trend trading, I, I I tried to do that. It just didn't work for me. Maybe I was some bad luck or the market. Who knows? So the, the range is more appealing to me. Okay. So no ideal entries based on our indicators, but there are, but these buy alerts did, did do okay. All right. Let's look at RSI. Yeah, short entry here would have done okay. Uh, this one as well. Uh, we're close to a 30 here, but not quite. Yeah, that's uh, like 32 and a half, 33 and change. So probably would not have caught that. And then we don't have a I move above the 70 yet. So two short positions from a couple days ago would have worked on the RSI, but no other entries. So that's that. Any questions on render?
Okay, let's look for our Friday afternoon short. So we will look at all coin alert and sort it the opposite. You can look for a bad AA score. Um, I don't see anything below neutral, so that's not a good one. Uh, Long-term sentiment on the so dot theta shib. I like shorting shib and Doge. So little little bias there. Matic. I have a I have a, a a little bit of a swing trade with Matic, so I don't want to short it. Uh, all right, let's look at shib. Okay, on our five minute, instead of looking for um, a, a low entry, we, get, we got a high entry and we just got a little pump on SHIB. So this might be one that's uh, is ready to drop some. Uh, there's really nowhere to put a, a price alert. I would suggest to not just pump this area here around 745. We're at 744 now, so you know we're we're already in in the zone on the five minute chart, and we've got RSI sort of confirming the RTI is too high, and we're squeeze momentum is is not with us. So on the trend side, it's it's not ready yet on the five minute chart. Let's go to the 15 and look at divergence real quick. We printed a, a bearish divergence a couple of candles ago. So let's see my my range is not caught up caught up yet. I turn it off. No, there it is. Sometimes it takes a moment to, to pop in there. So yeah, I would have taken this. That would have been a nice move. Oh wait, no, that's it. That is a trade I like though. In this one, I'd probably still be, I'd be in it. I'd still be in it. But this looks pretty good. The shorts are are moving pretty well. That one takes a while. This one isn't moving as much as I thought it was. I'd probably still be in that trade if I took that one. Um, hmm. I like divergence for finding shorts usually. Let's look at super trend. That cell entry is not very good. This one's not bad. Yeah, I'd still be in this one. Hmm. Not liking this for a short. Of course, it's just, it is pumping. That probably has something to do with why we're not getting a, a good entry. Now on our, let's look at the short options on our RSI. Uh, we've got an entry here. It's a nice move down, though. 15-minute chart, I expect higher numbers. Yeah, it's just barely 1% move. Uh, here's another move down. Pretty similar. I don't know. I'll probably still be in that one. Uh, that's this one here is a little bit better. A little higher entry and move down. So this one should trigger soon. So think about SHIB as a short option, not financial advice. Any questions on on SHIB as our not so good uh, short of the of the day of the weekend? Okay, well, I got a late start today, so we're at the 40-plus uh, minute mark, minus uh, eight or nine minutes, give or take. Any questions on anything I've talked about? Any coins you want to look at? Anything else? All right, well, oh, quiet ones. Uh, I'll wrap it up here, and you guys have a good weekend. If you're watching this on the recording, Please check out the opportunities in the pinned comment. They help fund the channel. If you're a Carbon member, you'll have to bounce out of this and then click the link for the uh, separate Zoom call starting in about 15 minutes.
We will see you then. Welcome back, Craig, and see you later. Yeah, bye.